Hello, we are now going to discuss how we can do basic programming in Siemens. Um, I'm going to take this from the approach that someone may have had very limited or just knowledge of PLCs, or maybe have treated the PLC as just a giant black box with lights that go on for inputs and lights that go on for outputs. Um, but Again, let me let's break this down. Where we do all our programming is in OB1, which is an operating block number one. This is main. You can see that over here on the side that I've just highlighted right there it is located under program blocks and located under the PLC that you've created, um, which we've talked about in other lectures. And so all our programming goes in here. Now, OB1 technically is just something that we is our scheduler. That's what calls everything. Um, if I have a complex process, I could have multiple functions or function blocks that are being utilized to do my commands. But for the sake of argument, for just starting out, we're just going to use this for our main programming. And there, and if we, if you've done anything at this point, you may have done some basic logic commands and other things. And that's what we're going to program just to show you how they work and how they look in ladder logic. Now with with Alan, uh, with with any uh, PLC, there's multiple appropriate ways of doing programming depending on where you locate. And we in America default to ladder logic because it was created for a bunch of electricians who knew that old ladder logic, so it helps them understand. But in other places, in Europe, for instance, they might like function block. So if I go to properties, I can change this. So here's my main. Um, and I can change this to function block diagram, FBD, and you can see kind of automatically does it for me, which is really nice. Um, but more on that in a second. Um, I'm going to switch back to ladder logic. So properties, switch back to L LAD, which is ladder logic. A couple of notes for the software itself. Um, I want to highlight the window I'm in, and, and up here you'll see if I need to insert a network or delete a network. Now you can do different aspects and add to this, but think of a network as a way to structure the program. So if you have a couple uh, lines of code that are doing one thing, you can structure it together and you can collapse it and hide it. And unlike other softwares, you can have blank networks and it's not going to throw up an error. Um, so that's how we add it and, you know, delete the, you know, that. Um, this is open all networks or collapse all networks. So if you have a large program that allows you to kind of open and close things. Um, you can turn off comments and comments disappear, turn on comments. Right here, this is a way of changing your addressing. So sometimes with your tags, you may want to see the actual hardware, or just want to see the tag. Well, I can hide that so it's showing me only the hardware or showing me the, ta the, the tag and not associated with the hardware. So I can click through it all and there I go. And you can do so symbolic and actually symbolic is a tag. Absolute is the address. So that's cool. Um, so a couple other things. Network comment. You can turn off the network comments to to clarify things. And you can turn off uh, so the favorites if you want. But I always use the favorites up here. This stuff is here for programming up at the top here. You know, like go to previous error, go to next error. So you have errors. You can do some error searching. And then. Um, Check for inconsistencies as well, or incons update inconsistent blocks as a way of doing like online programming. And we'll talk about the sunglasses in the future monitoring. Okay, so this is a basic setup for program, and right now this is what we would consider an AND logic. It would utilize two examine on. So let's explain what I mean by that. Now, in ladder logic, you're used to seeing this be a normally open contact. And you're used to this being a normally closed contact. But remember what the purpose of those are. If it's normally open, it means when it's unenergized, no power is passing through the switch. Where here in the normally closed contact, power is passing through the switch. And when the switch is energized or actuated, power stops flowing through the switch. With a PLC, it can't see the state of the switches. It only sees the state of power being present at the site of the terminal block of the PLC. So, to show a picture, 
this light right here on the PLC, this one right here, that is saying, and it's lit up because power is, in this case, flowing out of my DC power, is flowing out of my power supply. So my DC power supply, which is kind of, we got a jumper here, but there's another little wire right here. It's going over to the switch that is behind. So the switch is over here, kind of like, you know, we'll set it up right here. Um, I'll just do an old style, you know, push button horizontally. Oh, let me erase that, sorry. So, uh, so here's my normally closed switch right here. It's closed, and so out of this terminal, or out of a power supply, it's going to here, so out of this block here, and then it is being routed up to the other side into the place where it plugs in in the terminal block up here. And since power is flowing through this circuit, going this way from my positive to my negative, and it's grounding out up in here, is passing through here, and that's what's lighting up the input right there. So that is the basics of, a, of an input, and if I have a normally closed switch, that's gonna stay on all the time. If I have a normally open, so if I have a normally open, same thing, going from a, a positive power supply, so here's my normally open switch, or push button, so my normally open push button, and it's going routing to anywhere else, and that's why these are off, because power is being being stopped at the switch, so it's not recognizing that that input is on or engaged. So in the hardest thing for electricians to get is getting off of the mindset that if I have a normally closed contact, that the input is on and programming appropriately. So let me um, clear this out and we'll go back to the, the, the ladder logic. And this, hopefully this will make more sense. Because um, all this is all this is saying is, is there power or is the is the input high? If it is, return a true and allow and allow the logic to pass. All this is asking is, is the input false or low and if that's the case return a true and send it back because i can ask the same question four different ways and to get a different answer of true or false depending on the way i answer it so you don't see me but i'm a a, a strapping you know young stocky 240 pounds and and if i go to someone and say if a little kid because they're a bastion of honesty comes up and he goes are you fat i'll have to say yes i am fat and that is true if he comes up, that little kid comes up to me and goes, are you skinny? I will say false. I am not skinny. But I could also ask the question, are you not skinny? Now, that doesn't seem right because that's a double negative in English and the English teachers will throw a fit. But logically, I can ask the question, is, is this light not on? And so in the, my, my, my fat skinny example, am I not skinny? The answer would be true. Am I not fat? The answer would be false. I am fat. I admit it. So this is asking, is something not true? Is something true? And if it answers true, then it will proceed to connect the circuit and send everything through. So when we program, this is why we use these logics, because it's a way of, of thinking things through and helping matters. But so be careful when we start programming that we think in these terms. So in this case, with an AND gate, and you might remember from digital logics, it looks something like this, the D with, uh, with two inputs and an output. This is the same as that there. Excuse my drawings. I'm a wonderful drawer. But basically, if this switch is high and if this switch is high, make this true. So these gates here are not normally open, normally closed. It's better thought about it, examine on, examine off, or you know, uh, 
or um, that's a Alan Bradley terminology. So in Alan Bradley to be XIC and the other one be XIO. Uh, but in this case, is this high true? Is it low, false? But this is an AND gate. So both of these would need to be high in order for this output. And this is a, a coil or energized output. So this only reads, this actually does something. So keep that in mind. When you see something that looks like this, that says, read its status, this will make something change. So often we get in the habit of saying, these have to be inputs, these have to be outputs. No, I can read the status of this output and return that was true or false, correct? Um, and we'll get into that in a second. So let me erase drawings. But input one, input two, and output. This is an logic. I will set up something in a second a little more that show you how to actually do all this. This is or logic. So or logic, where if this is high, turn this one on, or if this is high, turn this one on. And from digital fundamentals, this is like the bat wing. So if you were used to digital fundamentals, that's what that looks like. Okay. Um, but if I make this high make or make this high, this will turn on. These are by far the most common. We'll often call that a branch. So now let's ask a question, oh, how do I make these? So if I need a new network, I can insert a new network and it will automatically populate. And so what I'm going to do first is do the next logic, which is a not logic, which we've kind of already talked about is using this and they call it a normally closed contact. I don't know if I like that equivalent, but I like examine off or examine high, examine low, examine on, examine off. And so once this populates, if you see red little question marks to saying, hey, give me, a, give me a name, relate me to something. And so in this case, I will just to demonstrate, I'm going to go in and name it to the output that we have up before. And then once I hit enter, it goes on. And so now you'll see here's my output number one. Here's my output number one. And so when output number one is not on, turn on output number three. Now, good practice is when you're programming, only place one output at one time to be turned on or off. But here, this is not. So, huzzah. Now, something that you could also do, and I'll just Throw this in. So if I highlight this, I can put hit the arrow. I can also put in a normally closed or uh, examine on system, and I'll just do output two because I can then do this. And Alan, this act there actually is a command, and I'll show you over over here in basic instructions all your commands, and under here is bit logic, and one of the ones you'll see is a not that you can put in, and it'll just actually invert it for you right there. So if you're having troubles with this and want to invert, you know, and remember um, with a knot in digital fundamentals, it sometimes looks like this, like a little triangle with a, with a, a circle, or you might see the circle by itself. Just keep that in mind on the end of something. Uh, so let me delete that. And so now I can go in and call this output four. So same idea, but this is a not command. But this is how I can add different things. So how do I branch? Well, let me explain that this is so. So a nan. A NAN logic so it this is gonna just go with but basically NAN logic says both things need to be false in order for something to turn off so not this and not this and in ladder logic it, it looks like an or setup but with but with um, normally closed contacts I can set it up that it looks like this. So if I highlight my network, or let me put in my, oh, 
if I put in the wrong thing, if I double click on the command, I then get the drop down and I can change things. That's kind of nice. But once that's there, I can put in my little, you know, setup. And then if I want to connect it, I close with the arrow here. So close branch. And now, boom, here we go. We'll do output five. And let's do switch four and switch five. Now you can reuse inputs like crazy, um, but I'm just going to do this for the sake of making life easier. But now that is NAND logic. Woohoo! Last but not least is NOR logic. This nor this should be on and we'll turn off things so nor logic and that is kind of like the and logic but with these examine off setups and i'm just going to put in input five and i'm going to put in input six why not Cool, and now run an output, whoops, undo, put in an output, let's do output eight or seven, I skipped one. Well, and then one more logic, and now both of these here, if I was doing this in digital fundamentals, it would look like, so this is NAND, so it's the D with the circle on the front with a line coming out. That's a NAND gate. Where NOR is, whoops. Where NOR is the, the OR symbol with the circle in the front coming out the front end. So those are those logic gates that connect to digital fundamentals if you've ever done that. And then last but lot, the last one that I'm going to highlight is an XOR gate. Um, this is like, I'm going to just go in and copy like this here because this will help me. And so um, let me just copy this. If I want to copy something, just highlight or you can shift and highlight everything. And then you it's normal to keyboard shortcuts, Control C or Control V. And now everything's highlighted. But in this case, I can just, what we do is, is basically make the off input opposite so that it's only going to keep, only one of them will be on at one time. It forces, so you can see what I did here. So I have an examine on and examine off on both lines where one input will be the examine on. And if you want me to, kind of order better, you can see that, and you can see that difference there. And I'm gonna change it to output number six, because I don't think that's one I've used. And that is an XOR logic. And again, in digital fundamentals land, it looks like this. So it's an XOR, and usually they got a different little line here, like that. That's an XOR. So now it's time to go online. Now that I have all my logic and we can see how all this works. So let me go online. So, so I'm going to hit save project because it's always good to save. Um, since I created tags, the best thing to do first is always rebuild your hardware and download it. I will always right click on PLC, go to compile and rebuild all. You don't have to do this once you're in the th thick of things, but it's always good to do the first th time through just to make sure you don't have any errors. So I'm rebuilding, I'm compiling and rebuilding all my hardware. So the only warning is it wants me to encrypt it or have a protection level so that the uh, North Koreans don't hack us. Um, now, next thing is to download, I right click on the PLC and I can download the hardware configuration to the device again. The first time through, always good to do once just because it makes sure that your hardware is set up right. And so now it's going to look. So it's looking for the PLC. Again, do you want protection? No. So I hit load. And I can then start my modules if I want to, but I won't. I'll finish and I'll start it in a second. And so now 
that's one way to compile. The other way is up here. See the little funky number and the funky little number line set up right here. These are the these are what you'll utilize a lot. But if you notice, it's not active right now because I clicked off of it. I need to click in my program window, and then I can hit compile. It's going to compile the software, and then I can download download the changes to the new program. It's going to ask consistent yes load. This is where you'll have to fix any er errors or stop things. And now I can start all and finish. Now, if I want to monitor, I have to hit the sunglasses. This is monitoring on and off. And so now I can monitor. And if I see green, everything is good. But you can see green here and then blue dots mean it's not engaged. So if I go down, I see lights on right here because it's inverting logic. These are not gates. So when they're not on, turn on. And that's saying these lights are on. Same here. Both of these are not on, so power the output. Both of these aren't on, power the output. And in this case, neither one of these, and you can see how it, everything stops. Okay? So now if I power on input one and two, both high, you can see that's now on. Hooray. And if I go down to where I used that output before, you can see now that output three is off because it takes the value. It's this is reading the value of output one, which is now high, and saying no, I don't want it to be high when I, with this command. I want it to be low, and now it's off. So this is saying, am I not fat, for instance? And the answer is, you know, false. Uh, you know, that's why that's going out that way. So going back to my OR commands, we can take a look at that a little closer. Take a look at OR commands, so input three and four. So I turn on one and it went high. I turn on the other, it stays high. So this requires either one of these to turn on and it goes on. And once again with the not, by had input two, you can see it turns off once it was high. Either one is a way you can use knots in, in Siemens. And now in NAN logic, output three and four is off, but in this case, it needs both to be off. And now both are off, and that turns off the output that is based upon NAN. So four, not four, and not five. Input five. So, or fall, uh, uh, input four not on or and input five not on turns on input five. But now that they're on, it turns it off. That's what that logic is saying. Uh, let's go to here. And this is the nor, so four or, or, or five, input five or input six needs to be, will kill it if it goes high. So here's input five, and now you can see output seven is off because only one of them needs to go true in order to, which is the exact opposite of an OR gate, correct? And last but not least, let's look at XOR, okay? So input three and four, that's my XOR, turns on output number six. If I hit this, it's live. But if I hit input four on, it turns off because only one of those can be a high for this, so it's either or. That's another way of looking at it. Choose one, not both. So now that both one's on and one's off, it will work. But if I turn both off or both on at the same time, it won't work. These are the basics of logic. And lastly, if I want to see what this looks like in function block, right click on main operating block, switch to function block diagram, Hit OK, and look, it has now changed everything to function block. So, and is the ampersand, or is is greater than or equal to 1, which makes sense. If this 1 plus 1 is 2, just 1 in there is, you know, that, and you need the equal in order to change this. There's my not, 
Now, the nice thing about the knot is right here is that little circle. Now, this is just a single and because the way we did it before, because it's this and not, and so that it adjusted it for us. Right here is the or with two knots in front of it. Now, if I wanted to, I can remove the knot by just clicking here and put the knot on the back end there and it still will work. And here is a simplified XOR. Now, there is a command in here, X. And so if I want to delete, where is it? If I just do this and do XOR, that should work for that one. Oh, I did it right there. Oops, undo. I just delete that, and then I'll just change this to XOR. And so now, if I you know download, oops, gotta get rid of this. There, hit down, hit download. Do I want to overwrite? Yes. And now I can put my sunglasses on. And instead of saying hi, it has a true or false right there. So true, true, both don't work. So it works just like an XOR. So it kind of simplifies things because it's one box rather than two boxes. But there's my not, not making the and true. Or I could do it this way, my or with a not to make my, my uh, so in this case, it's nor, uh, if so this is a little bit different because this is, this should be a nor, this should be a not when it changes things. Um, whoops. Because it's not and not oh, and now so now see how this goes orange if I make a change that's what it's looking for and if I whoops download and I can update the inconsistencies so there we go so if I this is a so this is a nor here. So, so if I do input five, so now it's working like a nan. Huh. But anyway, that's only because I have the output on the front end here and not on the back end, where this is operating like a like a nan. So you do have to be careful. I'm more of a logic ladder guy, ladder, ladder logic guy. So you know, so. And so now that is working like a, where's four at? Am I clicking the wrong switch? Three and four. There it is. I'm clicking the wrong switch. So that is supposed to be working like a NAN. Where this is supposed to be working like a NOR. Oh, that's. So if I. Simplify this like this, that should work like it's supposed to. So, apologize. Been a long day. So, now this should work like it's supposed to. It's on. If I turn one of them off, it should turn off. If I hit the right switch, if I hit the what right switch, somewhere, there we go. So now it's off. So it's working like it's supposed to. So that's the one minor difference with function block, but hey, it was better than nothing. So, and there's my not equal there, same thing. That's how we program. In the next lecture, we'll talk about combining logic and actually, actually do things like a ceiling. Thank you for your time.